Um, hi everyone. Uh, yes, so uh, I don't have much slides today. Uh, I'm just uh, going to use this opportunity to um, uh, kind of give us give, give you guys a stated report of what I have been done for this uh, particular area and um, I and also the latest like the API, what the API would be look like so that I can get some feedback and uh, you know we can eventually having those in uh, kernel for us code. All right, so yeah, this is, uh, so we have some uh, uh, discussion in Cambridge Host in previous conference. Also, there are some uh, discussion in the email list, and I also have some discussions with uh, uh, Rust community for the which memory model we should use, basically. Uh, the conclusion right now is uh, just to use the Linux kernel memory model. And the reason behind that is can be complicated. One, for one thing is that, uh, the Rust memory model, which the C++ one, doesn't really know the other memory model. So if we want to write uh, a code in C memory model and then communicate with the code in, uh, sorry, in C memory model, communicate with code in the Linux kernel memory model, then it require like a lot of work to make that in theory, in theoretical work, and also require the work that uh, compiler implementator will will uh, make sure that the synchronization actually works. So it's much complete in that way, but if you, if anyone has interest to do that, I'm happy to know. Uh, uh, but right now, in kernel, we stick to use our own uh, memory model. And uh, the other thing, uh, sort of uh, coming to conclusion, is that uh, uh, we in this kernel memory model, we have the thing called uh, dependency ordering, which basically uh, is some, uh, if one day data has some ordering between uh, normal relaxed uh, read and write, then we in kernel we treat it as ordered so that you can use this ordering in your concurrent code. So uh, it's naturally that since we use the Linux kernel my, my model, and then the Rust code will also uh, can rely on the uh, dependency ordering. Uh, but uh, it's the the it it, it actually requires more work. So you will need to require that compiler doesn't optimize uh, code. And uh, doesn't, that doesn't optimize certain code away. And you also probably need to put some tag onto your uh, uh, atomic access to make sure that the following uh, atomic access will respect to this ordering. And uh, also, similar in C, that uh, we know for sure that there are some cases where the uh, dependency will just, just uh, break. And the, what we do is just we tell people don't do radical in that way. So that could be the same case for Rust if, if we're relying on dependency ordering. All right. Uh, so uh, the other thing I didn't I failed to discuss previously is about uh, data risk rules. So uh, uh, again, Linux kernel memory model has a different, slightly different data risk rule. So we don't treat normal read and atomic read as data race on, on the same, same object. And uh, I think this is also the direction that Rust is moving to. And so since we implemented the atomic ourselves, so this is not data race. And the other thing is that in C side, we have sometimes some code, I don't know who wrote, uh, wrote that, but relying on normal uh, read, read write to be atomic. And uh, it, uh, for me, I think it's, it's, feel, it's feel like unfair for Rust code to just, uh, if you want to, if you have a Rust code, which read the, the result from that uh, uh, write, then you, it's, it's much easier to just assume that since C, trick, C code treats that part as atomic, then you can just treat that atomic. Then therefore there is no data race. Otherwise, you have to modify the C code to make sure that uh, uh, that's, that's, there's no data race. That sometimes can be really, really uh, painful. So here is an example of what I mean. Uh, so in the, uh, the, the bar case is to uh, C uh, memory access, and the one is normal read, the other is normal write, and the below is uh, three uh, uh, Rust uh, memory access. So uh, if we are using Linux kernel memory model, then the operation A and the operation, I'm not sure if this, so operation A is a normal read, it will not have data race with operation D because uh, normal read would not uh, have data race with atomic read. 
and uh, for the for the but if we do a normal read, but you do a atomic write, the A and the E plus E is, is actually a data race uh, because normal read can have data race with atomic operations, and uh, what uh, the other the the, the the third case is if you have a normal write, write B, and uh, which with the normal, with atomic read, and uh, if the C side relying on the normal write to be atomic, then this is not data race. But uh, it's better that if you can rewrite the uh, uh, B into a write once, so that is atomic uh, write. Okay, all right. Uh, anyone have any question about this? It's maybe a little bit. All right. No, let's move on. Uh, that doesn't work. Okay, so I was sent this uh, RFC like three months ago. It's basically just uh, wire everything into. Uh, C head in, in, into Rust. So the API looks like this way. You have a type, uh, a multiple type, uh, which is called atomic i32. And you have uh, basically similar to a C function, you have the fetch add function, and you can uh, use that as a user. So two things to not notice here is that first, it's, that it's not a generic API, so, but it's similar to what Rust has in the standard library. It's not generic or the type and the second part is that uh, I use the same uh, name convention as we use in kernel for uh, fetch and add. So you have to use the uh, suffix to uh, specify the ordering uh, branch. So this is the what I did uh, three months ago. And uh, I, for, for myself, I, I think this API actually looks okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's a good starting point. Um, but I got some pushbacks and saying I should do something uh, differently. So uh, let's move on. Uh, so yeah, right now it's uh, what I have. So it's a generic type of T. So, uh, but although it's generic, but it's not supposed to be put anything in the in, the, in T. It can only support uh, a list, uh, only a list of types. And uh, also, you can support like a new types of the basic types, and uh, the user would be look like this. Uh, wait a second, did I? Did I mess something? Uh, uh, let's, let's move on. So, the user would be like. Responsive or? No, no, no. I, I think I, it's my my own mistake. So, uh, let me let me explain. So the first uh, you the first line user is basically uh, just a generic type. It's basically looks similar in previous uh, example, and you can do a uh, operation on the uh, variable. And the second is what I mean by um, a new type. So you can basically define a new type of u32, and uh, you say that it's a new type. And uh, if you impose a trade called allow atomic, then you can use that. You can put atomic, you can put the, the new type into the, you can put the atomic uh, new type and uh, use that for atomic access, which basically can cover all the cases where I know of in the kernel. Honestly, like even without atomic, even without generic API, I think most of the cases in kernel are already covered. And uh, yeah, so the actual thing I did for uh, while I'm working on this generic API, uh, is that I make the ordering uh, variants as one of the parameter of the, both as the type parameter and also as the function parameter for the atomic function. So if you look like this, so, so here we have a atomic read function, and in kernel we only support two uh, ordering, one is relax and the other is acquire, so it has a type, so the ordering we can put here must uh, import the trait, either is acquire or relax. Uh, this gave, uh, at least gave users some idea about what the ordering this operation actually support. And uh, the other function is fetch add, which actually support four ordering, uh, acquire, release, relax, and uh, fully order. And so it's put, it, so the 
ordering uh, trade bound is all. So um, when user when user user uses HPI, it basically we just pass instead of using a suffix, it will just pass the uh, this is. This is actually a type, but it can use as a, a, a variable of that type because the type is zero type. So, so basically, you instead of using a surface, you pass in as a parameter, and that will just uh, uh, do the same thing, rotate to the to the exact function that actually uh, uh, implemented the, the atomics. One thing to notice if you put What kind of compiler error? Like, will it be uh, clear that what we did wrong is we used a invalid ordering, or will it be like uh, this trade is not implemented? Uh, right now, the right now the compiler error is not uh, that helpful. It, it, it gave you a compiler error about type mismatch, and uh, I s yeah, I think that would tell you that. Uh, the ordering you are using here doesn't import the ordering required by this uh, atomic operations. So basically, this part, so, so as here, so basically, the to, to full doesn't uh, import the acquire or relax trait. But it's not directly saying that you are using the wrong order here. So that part is, I, I, well, I don't know how to implement that, that but uh, it at least, at least gives you something. All right, so this is my, uh, this is probably the last slide of my, last uh, slide of my presentation, but uh, I got some questions. So first, that, does anybody have any like a strong feeling about uh, the generic and non-generic API? So for me, I, I prefer the non-generic, gen, not generic API, but I'm okay with this generic. So I would like to hear like opinions from users and uh, whether this, this kind of API makes sense to anybody. Oh, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, at least for the standard library, uh, Atomics, you get, I think you get a runtime error if you use the uh, ordering that's not compatible. And that, that's not cool. It's way better to get the error at compile time. So yeah, but, but, but if you use a uh, surfix, you also get a compile error. That function doesn't exist. So. Oh. On the standard library, I saw a thread yesterday uh, uh, that they are considering in the standard library of Rust to have the generic uh, kind of API in Rust as well. I guess my overall question is that I'm a kernel developer for quite a while. I just want to understand whether there will be complaining from kernel developers that uh, uh, the generic atomics may be too much. That, that's, that's what I'm trying to know. I'll weigh in as kind of a standard memory management kernel developer. And I, I saw this argument earlier, and um, I kind of went both ways. I, I don't think you can go wrong either way. But um, personally, I'm leaning toward the, the generics. Um, maybe I'm more comfortable with this C++ background long ago. But it, you know, why not, you know? Especially if you have a new type. Um, obviously, you want to be more constrained in the kernel. But on the other hand, you may come up with a new type. Um, uh, we're fooling around with all kinds of stuff with DMA APIs and new types for struct pages. Um, maybe one of those wants to be atomic. If it's already if it's already generic, then we can just implement it uh, as opposed to manually fooling around. So that's I would lean toward generics. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah, I tend to agree. I think it doesn't really matter too much either way. Um, if like the normal Rust standard library is not using a generic, that seemed to me a good idea not to use a generic. If they're planning to introduce one, that seems to be a good idea to introduce one. Could you have both? Just, you know, have the generic and then have a type alias so people like me who are slightly scared of angle brackets don't, don't worry at night? Yeah, could, could we have both? Uh, Beno, I see you, you are here. Maybe you want to... Make uh, comments on this. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. I, can, I can weigh in on that. So I, I think I think having both would would be a bit like weird because maybe people will then will then 
not not be able to 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 choose or rather people will be confused why there are two different ones and then they see it's just a type alias so i'm i'm not sure if if that if that is uh, a good idea because also like getting getting people used to to generics because we're using generics all over the place i don't think that, that generics should be, should be something scary. So I think if uh, atomics force you to use uh, generics, then I, I actually think that that would be a good thing. But if if we get too much pushback, then I think it wouldn't be wouldn't be a huge problem to to add them. And I wanted to also uh, to talk uh, talk about the the point that uh, Andreas uh, brought up with about the error type. I just posted something in the in the matrix chat. Um, where you uh, where there's an RFC for for a diagnostic yes, attribute yes, that yes, already yes. has been implemented in unstable manner I think uh, where yeah, you, can you can change, change the error message, message that uh, yeah, when a trait is not implemented so we could implement this on the trait for example uh, acquire or relax yeah, that we could implement uh, the the message and say uh, this must be uh, only acquire or relax for example and then then improve the error that way okay that's that's great thank you yeah, we'll Oh yeah, so this is a more of a comment from the C side of things, I suppose. So we, <clears throat> I see how this maps really well to Atomic T and Atomic 64T, mm -hmm. uh, but for better or worse, in the kernel, as you know, we have rewrite once, we have exchange and comp exchange, and they, they work on bytes, 16 bits, 32 bit, 64 bit, and in some cases we have mixed size concurrency where you've you've maybe got an atomic and you you use something not in the atomic API, but you might access fields of it. So mm -hmm. how would is that something that you've deliberately excluded here, or how would that work with this kind of generic approach? So, uh, for a uh, couple of questions. So, first, for uh, compare exchange, uh, it, 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 uh, if if we only think about uh, U32 and U64, we can just add it. And for the um, smaller size, like U8 and the U U16, I think so. Actually, I uh, so. I had uh, I had some so I put my code into so this is actually linked if you download the slide this is actually linked to the branch so in, in there actually I separate different atomic operations uh, as different uh, group so we could only impl implement it uh, like uh, uh, normal read and store and uh, and maybe compare exchange for U8. And without introducing things like uh, add and uh, decrement for U8, in that way, and uh, we can basically have if, if if people have want to use U8 atomic, they can use it, but the the usage will be very limited. They can only do like uh, uh, for mixed size, you have to like calculate your own address and do those uh, 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 conversion uh, casting, but uh, that actually. Well, so the idea is that uh, in the Rust side, we don't have the compare exchange uh, API. Instead, we only uh, have prompt API from the atomic. So you don't have like a read one. You, 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 we will avoid to use read ones and the normal compare exchange and uh, uh, store uh, SMP stories, uh, uh, SMP load acquire. Load those things will be uh, not use it, but those, those functionality will be wrapped into atomic. And you can convert a, a pointer, a normal pointer, to an atomic reference, and you can just access that there. So that's that would be the uh, plan. Okay, thanks. Uh, I have two questions. One is, can you use the new type also for enums? I think there is some rep U32 or something like that. Uh, you. Well, currently there is no plan to support a, a, like a enum in the generic. Uh, atomic because there may be some soundness issue, and uh, it's I, I just haven't figured out that what op option is safe, what option is not. So currently, so 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 uh, let me uh, put it uh, more clearly. So we have this trait allow atomic. It's a, it's an unsafe trait. So you cannot implement it yourself arbitrarily. And uh, moreover, we also make sure that it's only the the atomic model can input input this tra trait. Uh, 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 so the other user cannot import the trait, and uh, well, we have to do this through like a review and uh, some sort of stuff like that, that guarantee. So uh, second question: Have you also looked at like barriers and also the optimized barriers like before atomic, after atomic? Um, so 
I think that would be introduced straightforward, just like a function to uh, to the C, function call to a C. I haven't really looked into the uh, how the API would be lo look like, so that part I haven't uh, looked into. But I do have some idea that we can uh, maybe uh, have a relaxed uh, atomic return uh, type, which is called R R R M W. And uh, you only can upgrade your battery with, if you have that type. So that would be something like uh, make sure you, you have the type system to check that you really upgrade your barrier uh, with the uh, correct uh, like operation. But that, that may be too much, right? Maybe people will you at me, that's too much. It's, it's, it's too, much, too much in the type system. I'll be careful about that. I, I like it doesn't seem like a bad idea. I don't know. Then of course you look at the code on the side, but it doesn't seem like a bad idea. So this has possibly been discussed before, but with this new implementation of atomics, will we be stopping people from using the old core? Atomics API, <laughs> um, which has some limitations such as um, lesser architecture support for things like Atomic U64. So, uh, you mean, well, I, I, I'm not sure why. Uh, so, Linux kernel uh, Atomics actually support all this, like you, even for 632 bits. Architecture we sometimes support U64. Yeah, so, but the Rust core atomics don't. So with this API being implemented, will we get rid of the yeah, yeah, core yeah. atomics so that yeah, yeah. no one can accidentally uh, use that? Right, yes, break? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do that probably with a Clippy disallow thing that they have, or we try to get a CFG so that we really strip out the, the code entirely, maybe. I don't know if that would work, because maybe it's something the core library is using that internally, and I don't know. All right, uh, any other question or oh, input? If I really want to just use uh, core atomic, like inside, let's say I have something like uh, Daniel, like a closed off codec kind of thing, and I want to use um, Rust Atomics in there. Is that sound? Can I do that without breaking anything? Uh, so you need to ask for a Rust C compiler engineer to tell you that, because uh, they, so, so the usually pattern of I trying to ask them question that whether I can use so so I really tried very hard to you to to argue that we can just use Rust uh, atomics in, in this kernel, but usually they 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 either like I don't have like a really guarantee that it would work, and also I also want to point that uh, uh, the uh, I also have point to them that there are some uh, in, uh, uh, this, there are some optimization that can in theory, it happened in the, uh, with the Rust memory model, but they said, they, they basically told me that they, they won't happen, that, that won't happen. So, but they, in theory, that could happen. So it's really like they, they have the right to explain that, so I don't really know that, uh, you know, if you want to rely on that, I think it's, it's not, I, 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 I don't know whether that would work or not. I have a kind of answer off to that. There's two cases. One is where uh, you are just using atomics on something that is within your subsystem, and like your struct, nobody sees that. That's, of course, perfectly fine. Like, nobody cares. If uh, it's talking to something else, people will say that it is not good, but in practice, it's undistinguishable from kernel talking to user space. And in user space, we have no idea whether they're using a CMary memory model uh, as um, from the 90s or whatever. So in, it is like sound, uh, even though nobody will promise that. But there is a problem, which is something that I think is also interesting for him, which is that nobody really knows what the compiler barriers are. Like, the compiler barriers exist, the signal fence in, in C, I don't know what they're called in Rust, 
but nobody has ever tried to define them. So personally, if I was writing the, the kind of stuff that Bokun is looking at, I would also want to put compiler barriers close to the ASM so that the compiler knows that there is an acquire semantics there. But in order to do that, it would be nice to first have people agree on what the compiler barriers actually are. Uh, cr cross, what about cross-language LTO would affect that? That's something that you routinely do in user space between libraries or between kernel and user space. Like a Rust program that uses footexes is talking to C code in the kernel that uses, uh, that implements futexes. So he knows more. So. Yeah, don't do it, <laughs> is what I would say. Um, I th and that's not, not just to, you know, uh, try to scare you. It's, it's more that the compiler will have mappings from its memory model, the Rust memory model, whatever that might be, to sequences of instructions, right, for weekly order memory architectures. It, often there's a choice of the, of the instructions the compiler might emit for this. And it's really important that um, everyone uses the same mapping scheme, right? So if the kernel has got some uh, handcrafted assembly which is somehow subtly incompatible with what the compiler is generating, it'll probably work most of the time, but when it doesn't, you won't be able to debug it. It's as simple as that. So I would just avoid opening that can of worms if you can. Okay. Thank you. Uh. Another idea that we could do maybe is uh, uh, for the other thing that you mentioned, uh, the core atomic. Uh, Perhaps we could uh, eventually to use the third-party library that uh, I think w was your question, Andrews, right? Using third-party code that uses core atomics, right? We could maybe try to map, so don't allow to use the core atomics in kernel code, but maybe we could allow to use the core atomics that call into your atomic uh, types just for the purposes of third-party code that we may yeah, want yeah. to so, use. So, yeah, so we can implement it, uh, core uh, atomics with Linux kernel memory model. Yeah, I think we can do that. Uh, it's it's a, Linux kernel memory is really stronger than than the even uh, if it's just the subset that we need for whatever library that we want to use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's 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 doable. Yes. Or you just disable LTO on libraries like that forever. Okay, any Bye. other, there is no question online, right? Okay, so thank you, Batum.